Good morning, everyone. My name is Chris, and I'm a technical assistant with the Okanagan Regional Library. Today, I'm going to show you how to create custom brushes in Photoshop. I use these all the time in my digital paintings, and if you watched my previous Intro to Photoshop video, you may have seen me using a few, but I didn't explain how to create them. Well, this time, I'm going to show you exactly how to make custom brushes. I'm going to open up a new document by clicking File, New, and Photoshop gives me a bunch of templates that I can use for the size of the canvas that I'll be painting on, but I'm just going to pick a default US paper size, 8.5 by 11 inches, and click OK. Here's what that gives me. To make a custom brush, I use the lasso tool to start selecting a shape. Now I can hold down the Shift key as I select, You'll see a little plus symbol appearing next to the lasso tool. I can hold down the shift key to select extra area. So I'm selecting something that looks a little bit like a clump of leaves. Good enough. Now I'm going to go over to my color swatch and make sure that my color is black. There we go. Then I'm going to go over to the Fill tool, this Paint Bucket tool, select it, and click on my selection to fill it with black paint. Now that I have my leaf selection, I can go up to Edit, Define Brush Preset. I'm going to name it Leaf Test 1. And now, if I go to the Paintbrush tool, You'll see it's the same old paintbrush, but if I right-click to bring up the brush palette and search to the end, there's a new brush. Here it is. We've made a stamp, a new brush, and the tip of the brush is shaped like those leaves that we just created earlier. Now with this leaf brush, I can stamp around and create copies, but every single one of them looks the same. What if I wanted them to all look slightly different? Well, in these brush settings over on the right-hand side, I can change the shape dynamics. I can change the spacing. Here's a wide spacing. I can change the scattering, so with every brush stroke, it'll lay down multiple stamps. And I can decide how far it's going to scatter. So let's pick a color, maybe a greenish color. And there we go. This is starting to look more like leaves that you would see on a tree. I'm going to go into Brush Tip Shape and Brush Dynamics and modify this brush a little bit more. So I already like my spacing, so now I'm going to go into Shape Dynamics and increase the angle jitter and maybe change the roundness jitter. You'll see what happens here in the preview thumbnail. If I change the roundness, it makes that brush tip shape a little bit flatter. So now we have a much more naturalistic looking leaf pattern. And if I start selecting a range of greens, so some darker green for shadows, like this, let's go with a really dark green for the really dark shadows, there we go. I'll use the color picker tool, that's this little eyedropper icon, to pick my light green color again, maybe change a little bit, and uh, now I can start adding in some bright leaves on top. 
Alt is the keyboard shortcut for the color picker tool, the eyedropper tool. So I've just color picked some of those dark leaves. Now I'm going to color pick some light leaves and I'm filling in the holes. Now, just for fun, I think I'll throw in some little branches. I'm going to change my color to a kind of reddish brown. I'm going to pick a thin paintbrush. So let's say maybe this one. Yeah, that looks good. And now I'm going to draw in some little branches. Now I feel like this tree could use a little bit more of a highlight on these bright leaves, so I'm going to color pick that light green color and make it a little bit lighter, as if the light was hitting it. And then I'm going to go back to my brush leaf, uh, my leaf brush, and then I'm going to stamp a few of those There we go. Perfect. Well, maybe not quite. So you can use this technique to create a wide array of bushes and trees quite quickly without having to paint leaves individually by hand. You can use the same technique to create blades of grass, or bricks in a wall, or fence posts. The sky's the limit. Now I'm going to show you a time-lapse video of me creating a digital landscape painting using some custom brushes that I'm making up as I go along. Thank you. 
So I hope this has given you an idea of what Photoshop custom brushes are capable of. Thanks for joining me, and uh, check out the other videos on this channel as we add new content related to science, technology, engineering, arts, and math.